Hey guys, I'm back. And there's a couple things I want to say before I start this video. The first one is being that, well, we're in the middle of a freaking quarantine um, in a global pandemic. So that's kind of crazy. Um, I really just want to say I hope you guys are all okay. And, you know, if you know someone or if you yourself are impacted by this, um, I really hope that, um, that, you know, you can recover and that, uh, and that you'll be okay. Um, the second thing is, for the past like three or four videos, something like that, I've said that that video will be the last one in the series. And you know what? I'm going to stop saying that because I keep thinking of things like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool if we added this in the next video and just added on to the existing stuff? So I really have no idea where this is going to go, but I'll try to stop saying that and we'll just kind of go with the flow and, um, and yeah, see what happens. So with that said, um, let's get into the video. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is um, a couple of cleaning up things. Let's go into the cube and increase the bullet speed maybe to 10 and decrease the size of the bullet. Oh, bullet down here. Bullet 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1 so it doesn't really clip as much. Um, and then I want to do one more thing in the cube. I wanted to move the barrel up this is the barrel I want to move it up ever so slightly like 0.2 so it doesn't drag on the ground as much um and that's probably fine okay and next because hitting players and getting their username is kind of complicated it's doable for sure it's kind of a lot for one video so i'll probably split it up i want the player to get a score when they hit one of these obstacles you might not want it in your game but i think it'll be good to describe some of the uh, fundamentals of what we're doing. So what we want to do, since we're using a bullet, a physical bullet, and we're not raycasting, we're going to want to go into the bullet itself, and we're actually going to want to make a script that detects when the bullet hits an obstacle and eventually a player. So let's go here, add a component. We can just name this bullet, create and add, perfect. And as I'm a neat person, Oh, we got some new uh, icons. Um, anyway, as I'm a neat person, I'll drag this into scripts and then open it up from there. Okay, and as always, remove these things. And on this, we're really only, for now, going to want a on collision enter. So that can be a private void on collision enter. And then we want to make the bullet detect when it hits an obstacle. And one of the ways you can do that, I don't know if it's the best way, but it is definitely a way, is we can make all of these cubes. Um, probably a bad name, honestly, because the player's a cube. Anyway, we can make all of these obstacles. We can give them a tag. Let's just name them obstacles and then go through each of these and attach it perfect so now all of these they have a collider the bullet as well should also yeah it has a rigid body this is what you need for the on collision enter and it does also have a collider which is perfect so now we should be able to say if collision dot collider dot tag equals obstacles and for now let's just say print Oops, hit obstacle, and let's see if that works. Okay, so we're loaded in, and let's see if we can hit this obstacle. The bullets look better. Hit obstacle, perfect. Okay, and I like the bullet size and speed is a little bit better. Um, yep, looking good to me. Okay, with this working, this is where you're going to have the script that adds two kills and scores but we don't actually want to store all that information on the bullet script itself. The reason for that is because you have, um, I should have wrote this before, but when you hit something with a bullet, you want the bullet to be destroyed, clearly. So when you destroy it, having stats stored within it isn't going to do anyone much good. Instead, we want to pass it on to the player itself, and more specifically, the player state itself. And with the shooting a part of the state, a way we can do this is we say, we make the bullet have a reference to shooting. 
So we can say public shooting shooting script and we can we can set it in the inspector but something with bolt you may want to know how to do is this hide an inspector and then pass along a reference when it gets made so what i mean let's just do um bullet clone uh, dot get component bullet perfect so now the bullet we just instantiated we have a reference to the script itself dot shooting script equals this okay so now if we have something like public int score now the bullet itself can add to the score so we say right before we destroy the game object if it does hit an obstacle or eventually a player we want to say shooting script dot score plus equal whatever your score value is you can set that somewhere I'll just say five for now so now we can print score plus shooting script dot score so now every time we hit an obstacle one it should delete the bullet and two it should print the track of the score we're keeping okay so as you can see every time a bullet hits an obstacle our score goes up by five and the bullet deletes which is exactly what we were hoping for so yay and before we go any further while it might not make the most sense because our scripts are so small right now, I like to have my shooting and my score scripts separated, just to, for clarity. So I'm going to make another script called score and then create and add it to the player, move the script into the folder, and then open it up. Now with this new script, let's actually remove this score from here and move it into this dedicated score. Now, the bullet should throw an error, right? So right now it's trying to access the score within the shooting script, but we just moved it to a new script. So there's a couple things we can do here. One, we can make a public score score script. And then since this is public, well, let me just show you. So now we can just drag and drop this in right there. And now we should be able to say um, shooting script dot score script dot score plus equal five. And again, do the same thing, shooting script dot score script. That's one way of doing it. And we also can do it shooting script dot get component score. And this works because the shooting script is attached to the game object of the cube. So when it gets a component, it'll look between all of these things and it should find score. So shooting script dot get component score dot score script dot score rather plus equal five. And these will do the same thing. Um, since I already have the public reference to score script, I'll just leave, I'll just use this. So now basically it'll do the same thing, but rather than looking in the shooting script, which I want to keep for just purely bullets and stuff, it'll look into the score script itself. And just to make sure, it still works the same. Now, while this works, there's a couple problems with it. One, it's changing the value of another script directly itself, which can be very annoying to debug. And generally, you only want to change values from within the script itself. Um, we'll cover that in a second. And the, But the second thing was, there's no bolt if statements involved with this, so it might be a little bit problematic in multiplayer. It works for local, but some weird things might happen if you do try it with other people. So let's solve those things right now. In the score script, let's make public void change score. Doesn't need to take any arguments right now. And then instead of saying this, let's say, um, something very similar, but shooting script dot score, if I can smell it right, dot change score. Perfect. So now instead of changing the score directly, we're calling the score script to do it itself. And now since we are in the score script itself, we don't have to say this long kind of mess of shooting script dot score script. We can just say score plus equals. And then if we want a int, Maybe like an obstacle 
value or something. We can make this equal to five or something in the inspector, and then you can also have a player value. Anyway, um, for now we just have obstacles, so we'll just say obstacle value. So there, perfect, we have score plus equal obstacle value. And then we can also move this print over to this change score value as well. Clean up some code a little bit and bam. So our bullet script is much more simplified and we have um, everything where we want it. And um, as I just copy and pasted that debug statement, we can remove that and now we should be error free. So from here, let's plan out what we want the notification heads up display whatever you want to call it, we want to plan out what that says when a player earns some score value. So um, we could just say maybe username earned obstacle value points. Um, basically what this will look like is Brett earned five points. If you get a power up or something, you can make it do, you know, you can make it whatever you want, but basically that's what we're going to do for now. So right now we have the obstacle value and we need a username and guys setting username is big enough for its own video. So for now, we're just going to do kind of a janky workaround. We have player join script. So let's open that and let's just make a local username player pref dot set string username. And we want to set that just for now random.range 0 9 9 just so the names don't repeat and of course since it's a string we want to make it to string so now we have a local username and this is important because player press will set it on the local machine so you can see this but the other computers will not be able to see this when they see this code they'll just find their own their own their own uh, machines username not yours that's important so how do we get the username to the other machine? Well, one way we can do that is through events. So let's go into the Bolt asset menu again, and let's make an event, and let's name it score event. And we want to pass it, well, maybe just a string actually. And we can name this message. Once you've done that, hit compile and we should now be able to make an event. If you don't remember how to do an event, this will be good practice. First of all, we need to have this derived from something something from Bolt. So we can just make it the custom cube state. For simplicity, I'm just going to copy and paste this from our shooting. And again, this works because the score script is also attached to the um, player prefab, as you can see here and it has the bolt entity right here I custom cube state once you have done that we declare a variable and we can name it score event and we set that equal to the name of the event we just made which is score event dot create and now we can access the variables we set the event to have so if you remember we just set it to have a string so we can say score event and notice the lowercase s score. This is the name of the variable we just created. The score event itself is like a thing. That's why it's green. So score event dot message. And since we're locally sending, sending this out and our intentions will be for everyone to receive it, the message can have what we store locally. So we can say player pref dot get string username and since this exact message is being sent the other players will have access to our local username while we're at it we say player profile get string username plus scored so there's two things you can do you can make an argument here for score value but since we already have it declared i'm just going to say obstacle value plus points and then we can send the event so score event dot send now to receive this we need an event listener I usually make my event listener on the canvas itself let's make a canvas 
add a script called game canvas. As for instantiating the UI itself, unfortunately, the only way I know how to do it is rather annoying in Unity, and it's honestly enough to make a video of itself. So for now, I'm just gonna stick to debug statements and then we can uh, make the actual UI in another video. This is a bolt function, so we need to say public override void on event, and then it'll list all the events in the asset menu. We want the score event, on event score event, print, and as you see, it lists the name as EVNT, which you can change if you want. We want to print event.message. Of course, we only want the event to send one time, so let's put all of this in an if entity dot is owner, just to make sure that the player that scored the points is the one that sends the message. And we can also print this out since we'll be printing the message itself. So with all that out of the way, now it's time to build and run. Now I'm going to host on the client because I want the debug menu on um, the editor to show. So just to start it off, I don't know why it's so laggy. Let's shoot, just to make sure it still works for us. So five scored zero points. So our username must be five, and the obstacle value is zero because I forgot to set it in the inspector earlier. But anyway, you can see the event being called. It's raising, um, sending. So let's just test it for the client because that's the real test that we're trying to see. Let me clear this. I don't know why there's so many debug statements. I thought we turned those off. Anyway, let's see. Moment of truth. Yay. So, yay. So 980 scored zero points. So that's the other player's random username. Again, zero points because we forgot to set the value. But yeah, it looks like it works. So both players receive a score. Not quite as exciting in the debug statements, but we will get to UI display hopefully soon. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get through as much as I wanted to get through in this video. Um, I think that's just because the topic we're doing is pretty big in and of itself. But again, I'll try to get another video out sooner than my average upload speed has been recently. And so yeah, stay tuned for that. And again, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next episode.